Okay, so let's talk about a pulse oximeter or SpO2, um, what, what we're looking at on a pulse oximeter. So the important piece to understand, and I've got a, I've got a little drawing up here of what we normally might see on a pulse oximeter, somebody who's standing up or not really doing much. Um, this is indicative of the SpO2, the 98% is indicative of you having 98% oxygen, oxygen uh, carrying ability in your red blood cells at that time. Uh, the other number, 70, is your heart rate, your resting heart rate. That's not important right now. That'll fluctuate as you do things, um, and so will actually the SpO2. But uh, the reason we play with a lot of this stuff is um, it, it gives us an indication of whether we are using the oxygen or not using the oxygen. Um, and these tools can be fairly inaccurate. I've got one here, uh, it's called the Mossimo. It's fairly, it, it's pretty, it, it's more expensive, um, but it, it's a little bit more accurate than most. And that said, you can get a very cheap, you can get very cheap SpO2 monitors online. Um, so these, the reason we do this is we like to play the altitude game because it allows us to understand something with altitude. And altitude is a game of pressure to a large degree. Um, it, 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 it's basically something, the higher we go, the thinner the air is, therefore it's harder to actually absorb that air or the oxygen. It's not that the oxygen actually changes, it's that my ability to actually absorb that changes. Therefore, if I'm up at altitude long enough, I can create enough of an effect to where my body creates more red blood cells and I can actually start to pick up more of the oxygen carrying abilities. Um, my hemoglobin count may increase as well as a result of that, um, which is the protein that binds the oxygen inside the red blood cells. So the, there are multiple ways of going about this, but what we see here is that you know, the higher we go up, the less the pressure, the lower we get. So sea level, or if you even think of going into the ocean or water and diving down deep, you start to, your ears start to get affected much in, in similar ways they do when you go up, except it's the reverse, right? So you're getting more pressure the lower you get. You're getting more, less pressure the higher you get. One of the ways that we actually play with this is we want to create a low O2 environment. This can mimic the pressure game. And so on, on, on this little graph, I've got 98% across the top, which is normal. And in a typical scenario that we play with here, we'll use three minute increments. You could actually use more, five minutes. Um, but there's, there's some stuff out there that um, talks about using interval training with hypoxia or lowering the O2 levels that is actually much more effective at training you for altitude than actually going to altitude. So one of these ways of doing this is you take a three minute increment and you learn or teach yourself how to lower your blood oxygen levels below that 98%. Um, anything below 94% typically is what we call hypoxia um, or hypoxic training. There are many, 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 many ways to go about that, whether I'm just holding my breath, um, whether I'm controlling or slowing down my respiration, um, you know, the, and, and introducing that into intensity, right? Or if I'm running, if I'm cycling, if I'm working out, holding my breath, and then getting a few breaths in between. But what I want to do is I can use a pulse oximeter or SpO2 monitor in order to understand or see where I'm drop when I'm dropping my oxygen concentration levels. And that will get to a point to where if I hold them long enough or get them down there low enough for extended periods of time and then come back up to normal, I can actually retrain the entire process of altitude, therefore making myself almost bulletproof at altitude without ever going to altitude. And this is something that's been practiced for quite some time. Um, and you know, obviously it's something that you should be practicing and, and testing prior to actually implementing into race time scenario, but you can bet that doing things like even breath holds, max breath holds before an event at uh, altitude will give you an increase in red blood cells just from the stress alone, the spleen will dump a bunch of red blood cells into the system, which can change the entire process. So um, hope this helped and uh, made a little bit more sense of uh, the oxygen concentration levels or SpO2.